the self-made international beauty businesswoman worth an estimated 490 million euros. Dubai-based Huda Katan is also one of the world's leading social media influencers with over 37 million followers. Huda Katan, thank you Hi. so much for inviting Euro News today. We are so happy to have you guys here. I'm looking forward to a nice little chat with you, yeah? <laughs> of course, of and course. And these are your new offices. We're going to get a tour. These are our new offices. We expanded because we were hiring some people. Yeah? So, yeah. Business is going well then. Business is going very well. <laughs> Did you ever think, you know, that you would have this global, you know, beauty empire that mm -hmm. is doing so well? I think when you're starting out, you don't really know exactly what you're getting into. You know that you feel very passionate about a cause. You feel very, you know, very hopeful, too, that what you're doing is going to become something big. And so, you know, we set goals, and then I think ultimately, after we achieve them, we would have a new goal. And so we would just always kind of push forward. Tell me your family story and how it all began for you. Oh boy, do you want to hear it all? <laughs> <laughs> Could be a long program. <laughs> you know, um, my father and mother immigrated from Iraq mm -hmm. and um, they moved to America, you know, to find better opportunity. Um, and, uh, you know, my dad was a professor and we kind of moved around a lot. It was a little bit of a hard time. I don't remember my childhood necessarily being the most amazing or happy childhood because mm -hmm. I think it was always a little bit of a struggle when my dad was studying and, you know, trying mm. to, you know, really make ends meet, ultimately. I probably struggled with a few issues, like fitting in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was a very different environment. And, uh, and so I definitely feel like it built my, my bases, but it kind of made me very gritty. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, you know, it was like, it was probably a struggle when I went through, but it made me kind of not a shark of a businesswoman, but it made me a tough businesswoman. I feel yeah. like not that many things will ruffle my feathers sometimes. You're on well. Forbes list of most successful <laughs> female entrepreneurs alongside the likes of Beyonce, Thank you. Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> That's quite nice company, yeah? I mean, <laughs> those are my two role models. So definitely. Um, I mean, it was a huge honor to be part of that list. And it was also, it's very humbling as well, you mm. know, because I think you work so hard um, and you, you don't always look for, um, you know, a time where you feel you know, hey, people are actually acknowledging us. What do you think has been the biggest challenge um, in terms of coming up with a business concept and then leading your brand into the success that you're having today? You know, it's funny. It's like it's like a gift and a curse. I think the beauty industry was so hot mm -hmm. when we entered into it. So it was kind of a good thing because there was so much momentum, but it was also more challenging because everybody was trying to play. And I always say this. I'm like, everybody wants to be a part of beauty, but some people actually are a part of the beauty, you know, the beauty space. And, you know, I genuinely am obsessed with finding tips and tricks to look prettier because I, you know, I always wanted to be a cute kid. <laughs> and so, like, I still feel like when I'm playing with makeup, I'm still, like, in my, like, childhood state where I'm, like, experimenting with things and, you know, trying to find out, like, ways I can find out, you know, be cuter and then share it with the world. If you could give your younger self a little mm -hmm. bit of advice, what would that be now then? Ooh, that is deep. Um, I think the thing I would tell her so much is like, you're never going to satisfy everyone, you know? And it's like, and I always thought, why do I focus on like people who maybe don't love me? And I think about their opinion, my opinion of mm. what their opinion would be. And I started thinking about what about people, people who love me? Yeah. You know, why don't I think about what they think about me? And uh, it's hard. Why do we care so much about what people think? But that's just, that's who we are as humans. How important is it for you to be seen as a strong female woman, you know, who empowers other women, which is, you know, you've got a lot of girls who do look up yeah. to you. Thank you. Um, I take that very seriously, actually. Mm -hmm. um, even in our social media, I always say it's a responsibility. You know, when we started out in our business and we started to feel some success, I, I started to, to somehow, it's weird, when we started to feel the success, I almost got, I lost the motivation because I was like, I don't, I almost like started thinking about the purpose of why we do this. You know, why are we doing this? And I started thinking, you know, I really am doing this for my kids, my daughter, you know, and, and the people that are going to be surrounded, like the next generation of not necessarily millennials, but Gen Alpha, you mm -hmm. know, which is like the zero to 10 mark. I'm really thinking about people like that. Um, and I, I really care about what world they're going to grow up in mm -hmm. so much because the social media, and I can tell you from being in it, has put so much pressure on us. Mm -hmm. And we are inundated with content. We are inundated with stimulation constantly. And so I think about that a lot. As a fellow working mom, mm -hmm. the challenges that come <laughs> with that and the balancing, you know, can be quite tricky. Do you feel pressure? I do. Um, I always think about my daughter every step of the way. You know, honestly, mm -hmm. I never wanted to be a mother, to be honest. And when I ended up having a child, I got very serious about it. And I asked her often, you know, do you want me to just be your mom? 
do you want me to quit everything and just be your mom? And she said, nope. I want you to be head of beauty. And I'm like, okay. Hey. <laughs> I'm taking that very seriously. And I, and I do realize that, you know, she looks at what I do and she thinks of women very differently than the way, you know, we thought about women growing mm -hmm. up, where feminist was a bad word. She mm -hmm. sees it as a positive word. She sees, you know, it's a very different world um, that I think she's experiencing. And I think it's, I, you know, I want it to be a really amazing world where people are very, you know, they're in touch with themselves too. Family, and I've seen this right from your sister Mona, who's in business with you, to your staff here. You know, they're your family, they your are. extended family. You know, yep. that's very obviously important mm -hmm. to you. Is. How is it working with a sibling? Because I would fight <laughs> with mine. Oh, we do. <laughs> it's challenging because I think a lot of times you say things to your family you would never say yeah. to most people. No, exactly. You know, and so, um, you know, there's definitely boundaries that we cross. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we've been doing it now together for a long time. So we've learned how to assimilate and work together. Everybody has a style. You kind of need to learn it. There's going to be times where you want to adjust to it, times where you don't. Um, but ultimately, we are, are all working towards a goal. And we're all trying to always push each other better, you know, inside out. How important has Dubai been as a city in terms of being able to set up here and how conducive do you think it is as a city to business? Oh my gosh, I don't think that we would have achieved what we achieved in the US. Sheikh Mohammed, his vision, you know what it is? It's his ability to think limitlessly. Mm. That for me was so inspiring when I was starting out. I mean, Dubai is a new place. You, the UAE is new. It's 40 years old. Yeah. I mean, tell me what country is this amazing in 40 years? And it's challenging when people first move here. I think they need to find a way to assimilate. I never want to leave. Mm -hmm. Do you ever pinch yourself? I think every day I do a little bit. Um, I'm very grateful for my team. So coming mm -hmm. to work with my team is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very grateful for the amazing people I have around me because that's very inspiring as well. Um, yeah, I think we do. <laughs> Who keeps you grounded or what keeps you grounded? Obviously, family is a big part of that for my you. My daughter. She's very grounded, you know. Um, she's just very simple. Like, she doesn't care about all that stuff. She just wants to, like, play with Barbies or, like, make slime or make colorful rainbow spaghetti. So when I go home to her, it's like it, like, fulfills my soul. What does the future hold for Huda Katan? We're not just a beauty brand. You know, we are here to make the beauty space, you know, with all the other amazing brands, but we really want to have a forefront in it. We want to make the beauty space, like, somewhere that's warm and fuzzy and people actually feel empowered because of beauty. Please invite us back. <laughs> I In will. In the future, Huda Katan, thank you so much for <laughs> thank speaking you. to us. It's thank lovely you. Thank you, Jane. It was amazing. Thank you so oh. much.